Welcome home, Nini. You're the star. It's all about you. Nini, Nini, Nini. And no one's been my entire life. Nini this and Nini that. Nini, Nini, Nini. Well then. Stream 7 is here, baby. It's coming. And we got Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Always Sydney. It's always been you, Sid. I always had a thing for you. Everybody, Matt and I'm back here. I hope you're doing well. So, I was in last week. We heard that Neff Campbell and Kevin Williamson are returning for Scream 7. We know that Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega are not returning. The Carpenter sisters. So of course, we gotta wonder now. What is Scream 7 going to be? Not really, a, this is not about the plot. This is more about what is, just like every Scream movie, Scream 1 was the horror, the tropes of a horror film. Scream 2 dealt with the sequel. Can it be better than the original? We had that great scene in Scream 2 in the classroom where the film class was demanding what sequel was better than the original. Terminator 2, Aliens, uh, The Godfather Part 2, Empire Strikes Back. I think you got a thing for Cameron. Um, great scene. So that dealt with the sequel. The third film, Scream 3, dealt with wrapping up the trilogy. The third film in the trilogy. The fourth movie was way ahead of its time. That was really the movie that established the reboot sequel. You bring back the original three trio, but then you have a whole new cast. So it was a sequel, but also a reboot at the same time. That was supposed to start a new trilogy with this new cast. Um, it also dealt with social media. You know what Jill said. I'm not. I don't want friends. I want fans. You know, putting your life up on social media. That was way ahead of its time. Uh, dealing with the reboot sequel thing. That was way before the, the Force Awakens, Jurassic World, um, Creed. I mean, Halloween, 2018. I mean, it was completely way, uh, way ahead of its time with that. Uh, Scream 5, Scream 5, dealt with the toxic fandom, you know, what the fans want is what the movie should be, not what the director and the screenwriter and everything, everyone else in the production puts this film together, and you know, they, they, um, they brought up The Last Jedi in Scream 5, um, Scream 6, I didn't feel like it had the great, commentary, maybe because it was only a year after the fifth one, and it was like, okay, you've only waited a year, what, what kind of commentary are you going to have in a year? None. Other than dealing with, they know very, very small amount of what you put out there in the media, and then just judging by what the media says about you, that must be true. Like with Melissa Barrera, Sam Carpenter. Oh, she was the boyfriend of Richie, and Richie's dead, so she must have killed Richie. And she did, obviously, but it wasn't for, you know, out of um, self defense. It was, they made it look like she was a murderer, a killer. Um, so, they, so, whatever the media says, that must be true. Even though they really only dealt with that very little amount. Most of the movie was the revenge uh, plot that we saw in Scream 2, but a little recycled. So now it goes into Scream 7, and what is going to be the commentary for Scream 7? And I think I think I have a perfect idea. You know, I talked about last week of what is the Scream 7? 
and they're going to be, uh, sequel to actor number six. Are they going to go back and do a true sequel to Scream 4 with Emma Roberts, Hayden Panettiere, uh, obviously Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, um, and even, um, um, David Arquette? Ooh, ooh. Couldn't they? I mean, that could mean still being a possibility. That means you would bring back David Arquette to the film. Um, that would be interesting. Uh, and I thought about it, you know, without having Marissa, Marissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega, and they don't bring back the Minx twins, um, what is it, Jasmine Savoy Brown, and what is it, Kuma Gooding's son, Mason Gooding, and they don't bring them back either. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for Scream to take on the commentary of Rick Collins. This has been a thing for the past, I want to say, 10 years now. Retconning franchises. Like, wiping away a certain amount of movies in the franchise and saying, after this movie, nothing matters. This new movie is going to be the replacement of all those other movies. We have seen that recently with a lot of franchise movies. Starting with Halloween 2018. Halloween 2018 brought back Jamie Lee Curtis as an older Laurie Snurd, which was 40 years after the original. And they said, this movie takes place after the original. Michael Myers and Laurie Snurd are not brother and sister. That never happened. They even make a, they even make a point in the movie thing. I thought they were, it, what was that thing about Michael Myers and Maurice Snurd being brother and sister. Oh, that was just a rumor. That was just talk. That, that was never true. Um, so Halloween 2018. Halloween 2, Halloween Season of the Witch. 4, 5, 6, H2O, Resurrection. Never happened in the timeline. X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, they retconned retcon X-Men The Last Stand. The third film in the X-Men franchise. Everything that went horribly wrong with that movie, they retconned it with the time travel in X-Men in X-Men Days of Future Past. So at the end of that movie, that final scene with Jean, Cyclops, back together, Rogue, um, who else? A few other things. They retconned what we saw in X-Men The Last Stand. Terminator Dark Fate. That was another one that came out in 2019. That the director and even James Cameron said, everything after Terminator 2 doesn't exist. Terminator 3, Terminator Salvation, Terminator Genesis doesn't exist. Terminator Dark Fate is the true sequel to Terminator 2. Um... Even Jurassic World, a lot of people don't remember that when Jurassic World was coming out, um, the director, Colin Trevorrow, and even producer said, no, this Jurassic World is the true sequel to the original, Jurassic Park. Um, they don't even mention the other island in Jurassic World or Jurassic Fallen Kingdom. Now, I think they went back with Dominion and changed that again, but when it came to Jurassic World 1 and Jurassic World 2, there was a, no, never a mention of the other island or the events that happened. Um, so technically they retconned The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. At least for a little while. Also, Al we never got Alien 5, Colin, I mean Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5 that was going to have Sigourney Weaver Michael Bean and an older actress playing Nuke return and be a true sequel to Aliens. James Cameron's Aliens. That means Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, 
Prometheus, the Alien Covenant, no, no, don't matter, don't exist. Even though we never got that film, that was going to be a true uh, retcon of the other aliens, and it was going to be a true sequel to Aliens. So, now I'm thinking to myself, Scream can do a commentary on retconning. And they can do that now without having Sam or Tara. They can say, we're, we're going to ignore Scream 5 and Scream 6. And have a movie after Scream 4. Hey, they can even ignore Scream 4 if they want to. And they don't bring back Hand and Panic here. Then they could. I mean, when they bring back Hand and Panic here, it would obviously have to be after Scream 4. And they can do a true, true sequel to Scream 4. Now, whether they'll have those same elements that they were originally were going to have in Scream 4, I don't know. I mean, in the original Scream 5, um, I don't know. When they can find a way to say, okay, maybe. Maybe five years later, ten years later, after Scream 4, we're going to have Jill Roberts back. We're going to have Hayden Panic here back. We're going to bring back um, David Arquette, Dewey. We're going to still have Patrick Nepsey come in. And maybe Matthew Wimmer. Because there's always been a, a, a theory going out there that there were three killers. And even Scream 5, the original Scream 5, was going to set up for me that Jill was still alive and this other killer is going after Jill but Jill can't out the other killer or else the killer would out her as being a killer. So it would have been an interesting dynamic. So I don't know if they're going to have those elements again. Um, that was Kevin Williamson's plan. And then Kevin Williamson is back directing Scream 7. And right there, it's going to be retconning where 5 and 6 don't exist. Or, you leave those and don't mention them at all. And then if something does happen down the road where Melissa Marrero and Jenna Ortega can come back, then you do a proper third film in this new trilogy, 5 and 6. And the Scream Inc. I don't know. But I, think they can, but I do think they can take on the commentary of retconning that we've been seeing a lot lately, especially in the big franchise movies. So let me know in the comments below would you want to see a Scream 7 deal with the commentary on retconning? Like I said, we've seen it in horror with Halloween 2018, we've seen it in sci fi with or comic book movies with uh, X-Men, sci-fi with Terminator. Um, we almost had it with Alien. Uh, so let me know in the comments below, would, would this be an awesome idea for the stream franchise to tackle in the commentary? Because that's what these movies do. They, they have a commentary on what has been the trend in horror, in Hollywood. I think even Scream 4, that tacked on hospital scene was a, a commentary on alternate endings. Because those were very popular in the early 2000s after Scream 3 with the rise of DVD sales and deleted scenes and bonus bonus features. So, I mean, I think the original idea for Scream 4 was going to end with Jill coming out of the house on the gurney, still alive, and the media calling her a hero, the new Sydney Prescott. When then Aaron Kruger came in, did a couple of rewrites, and rewrote the ending, adding that hospital scene. So, let me know in the comments below, would you want to see Scream 7 deal with retconning? It could work, because like I said, if Melissa Marrero and Jenna Ortega do come back down the road, it wouldn't affect 5 and 6 at all. If any of them, they don't mention them. So let me know in the comments below. Matt the Maddie.